Hello viewers, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to talk about weatherproofing and sealing, uh, specifically kind of using the flashing tape and whatnot. Um, so this is the back porch, these are the back windows, and this is some of the work that the framers did to seal up the windows after they roughed them in. Uh, I think you could use about any flashing tape. Uh, they chose to use the zip tape, which is really good tape. Um, and there's a method to the madness of there's an order to this stuff, which may not be, you know, I guess, apparent until you think about it, then it makes perfect sense. So when you tape windows like this or any protrusion, I'll show you some others, you have to start at the bottom. So you run the horizontal strip at the bottom first. Then you run the two vertical strips, all right? And then you run the top horizontal strips. And the way that works is think about how water flows. If water flows from top to bottom, gravity, then you want to make sure that the seams overlap in such a way to where water could not get up under a seam, a you know, like on the, the tape edge, right? Where it's flowing down here and this vertical seam here from the cut tape edge is covered by this. Now, obviously you're gonna have a seam somewhere, right? You got this horizontal seam, but in general, that's what you wanna to try to do. Now, that being said, you can see here, ah, this one ran a little long, and I don't think it has to be absolutely perfect because certainly my the framers didn't do it absolutely perfect. Um, but that's how you do it. Um, also wanna show you, or on the subject, of how to handle uh, wall penetrations. So here, I'm gonna show you what I did. So this is our main gas line coming out and I have to show you, there's the pressure gauge. She's holding pressure, hadn't really dropped an ounce in what? Three, four days. So uh, I'm gonna call that a win for the, uh, for the gas piping. So that's pretty cool. So, here is how I did the penetration. So we sleeved the gas pipe in two, so this is inch and quarter gas pipe, sleeved it in two inch PVC, just so that if we ever had to change out the pipe or do anything, uh, it wouldn't be embedded directly in the brick. You know, we'd have options without tearing out brick. I used these uh, quick flash uh, boots. Um, if, you're in, if you're in the Tulsa area where I am, the only place to get these is Elliott Electric. Um, and they're not the cheapest thing. These are about, you know, 10, 12, 15 bucks a pop, but they're very nice. Um, they, um, it's basically just this plastic square with this rubber boot and they're sized according to the diameter of the pipe or whatever you're trying to fit through them. And so you basically butt that up against the wall. Then you use a flashing tape, like for window, window door flashing tape. Uh, this stuff I just got, it's what Lowe's had. And we do the taping the same way. So we start with, actually, let me back up. You butt this against the wall. You cut a uh, kind of a trapezoidal shape, um, you know, flap in the house wrap. Okay. And then you overlap the house wrap with the uh, top edge of the flashing plate for all the reasons we just discussed, right? So then we tape it. Do the bottom, do the sides. Then I run a, uh, a strip of this over the top to hold the, uh, the flashing plate to the wall. Then we lay the, the house wrap flap over. Then we use the uh, house wrap seam tape, Tyvek tape. I've heard it called green tape, whatever you wanna call it. And then we tape that and I did the same thing. At first I taped the horizontal section, then I taped the two verticals, right? And that should weatherproof that penetration and prevent any water from getting in. If water got, you know, behind the brick or running on this wall, that should keep it out of the house. So that's the gas pipe. Up above, we've got these three one inch uh, Smurf tube, ENT conduits penetrating. And I, I drilled the holes, I put them in, and then I put the flashing plates on and realized, oh crap, they kind of overlap and look kind of funky, but we made it work. Um, I'm gonna have the brick, and they're a little off because you know, I'm not the best at this. Um, but I'm gonna have the brick guy line these up on the same course since they're all, you know, flexible. Uh, so these are basically Airnet Service Provider 1, Airnet Service Provider 2. So I've got two decade conduits for two different lines, 
and then I can feed what it, you know, as internet service changes, if I switch providers, whatever, want to have two at some point to, um, to have either fall over or, uh, or a uh, gang up, you know, where I combine the bandwidth. Uh, I have the option to do that since my network equipment will. And then the third line is the uh, fiber D mark for the property. Ooh, that's fun. Those were <laughs> from rain. Look at that. Just that one has some water in it. I guess it was held right there. We slope up, so that shouldn't have gotten in the house, but ooh, that's good to know. Okay, we're gonna, on the fly here, try to bend that down a little bit to where maybe we don't have water get in again. Okay, back to the video. Fiber D mark to the, to the property. So I'm gonna have multiple fiber lines coming in here. I'm gonna have a couple go to the shop. I'm gonna have one go to the gate. And then I think I'll have a, um, I'll run a spare uh, from the equipment closet to the D-Mark box that this connects to on the surface. And then we'll have a spare that we could, you know, jack into here for whatever, if we need to run it to some other location, another structure or whatnot. Uh, moving along, this is half inch PVC conduit. Again, same concept. I used a different product here. This is called a uh, Henry Flex Seal. These for small pipes are way cheaper than that other stuff. Um, I think it was like 15 bucks for like a pack of 25 of these little sheets. And it's basically just this square membrane type of thing. You cut a hole, you know, slightly smaller than what you need. And then you just shove the pipe through. Works really well. Um, I had to order these online. I can't remember the, the uh, website, but Google Henry Flexi Seal, Flex Seal, something like that. Um, and that should uh, get them to you. And this is for the inner system bonding bridge bar. So what this is, this is a number six bare copper wire. This connects to a little bridge bar, what it's called the inner system bonding bridge bar. And that provides terminals for all of your low voltage people to connect their grounding systems to. So if a cable company brings in lines, fiber, AT&T, uh, direct TV, satellite, any of that stuff, all of their equipment has to be grounded and bonded to the house's grounding system. And this allows them to do that without going to the panel. So, you know, non-electrician folks don't have to crack a, you know, the electrical panel open to ground their stuff. This provides a nice safe way for those uh, utilities to do that. Phone system would be the same way. So this is required to be provided on the outside of the house so that those guys can do their work. So this is what connects to that. Um, and then the last penetration that we just got done, this is the main electrical panel stub out. So two inch PVC. I use the Henry Flex Seal for this too, mainly because I had them and I didn't have another one of those uh, expensive ones. And uh, this is big enough to where I thought, you know, it works. Um, so this is coming out, the main electrical panel is backed up right here. Um, and you can see it's a two inch conduit, but then we've got the hub, right, for the adapter going to the panel. So the hole is actually a little bigger. What I found, I basically took this Flex Seal, right, this square membrane, put the conduit on it, traced a circle, cut the circle out to where I had a two inch hole. And that that was big enough to where the membrane had enough elasticity to where they we could then stretch it over the hub and get a nice tight seal. And then taped it, you know, the same way. Uh, incidentally, when I did this, I had to move a bunch of these brick ties, a few of them because my framers went stud hunting and a couple of these didn't hit the stud. And so they were in the way of my electrical panel. They just, uh, so I had to fix that. So be prepared for stuff like that. If you're kind of doing this kind of work, you'll find all the stuff that the framers missed. I, I am surprised at the number of shiner nails I found in this house where the framers are trying to, you know, put the OSB on the, on the, you know, to the t studs or whatever. And they're just stud hunting until they hit it. And so there's a cluster of nails in one spot and, oh, it's a mess. But so that's, uh, that's wall penetrations in a nutshell. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you found it informative. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.